I'm sure by now you've been playing around with the new masking feature in Lightroom and I just thought I'd take this opportunity to look at a couple of small ideas. Perhaps you don't have a studio, perhaps you only have one light that you can use for your photography. What I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to show you how to create a very simple gel background with this. And as you see by the image on screen just now, I've made a couple of edits to this image already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it from there and show you how to just add gel lighting to the background. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate mask three, which is this one here. And if I go over the mask, you'll see that that is the model that's been selected uh, and a couple of edits made there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate mask three. And now that I've duplicated mask three, if I go over that as well, you can see that there, it's the subject. I need to invert that so that it's now the background that's selected. If I hover over there, you'll see that the background's selected with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back the exposure in the background slightly, just a, a touch. Not too much at all, just around about there. Now from here, I want to add a radial filter to this. So I go in and I create a new mask. And in this case, I'm going to choose a radial gradient. And I'm going to draw on roughly around about that area there. And remember, what I'm trying to do here is just emulate a gel on the background. So now that I have the gradient, I go into the three dots on the gradient here, and I right click and intersect the mask with, and in this case, it's the subject I want to intersect with. And as Lightroom goes through that, it will happen really, really quickly. There you go. And you see that the mask has now intersected with the subject. So what it's doing is it's clung to the model and we needed it to go into the background so it's just very simply click invert and then we have that in the background that's it that's that's as quick as it is and i've got show overlay on that's i like to work with the overlay on just so that i can see what's happening from here i'm going to adjust the exposure slightly and the reason I'm doing this first instead of adding a colour is just to let you see how much even that can enhance the portrait. From here, I'm then going to go down into my colour. So at the moment, I've got no colour effect. So I'm going to click colour effect and I'm going to go in with a nice colour. Right, red and green should never be seen, as they say. So let's, let's go in there. And... That's me, I'm quite happy with that. So from here, what I can do is I can push the exposure more and bring it back, but I just want a subtle effect here. Yes, it's made a big difference to the image as it is, but I just want a subtle effect. So even if I adjust the saturation, nothing much is going to happen here. You can see a slight change when I push the saturation to 100%, pull it back. So I'll just leave it at the 50% mark, or zero in this case. I'll leave it at halfway. We're not finished yet. One more thing to do to this, just to enhance it and make it look a little bit better. What we have to do now is this mask here, duplicate it again. And by doing this, look what happens straight away. And you can see the intensity of the light is still too much. So what we do there is we pull it back and it provides that secondary goal from this. Now, you may think the colours are too much or it's too bright, but at least it gives you the effect of that gel in the background. And the good thing about these as well is I can go in, if I don't like it there, I can drag that one down a bit, just to around, say, there, and I can then go back into this mask here, and I can drag that one down a bit, just to about there. I think the last one was placed about there, yep. Yes, not far off. So we have that now, and that's that's the effect. And from here, I could go in and I could change it to any colour whatsoever. I could go for any intensity of colour 
depending on what the effect or the final effect is that I'm after. I'll take it back to there just for the sake of this. And I'm also going to move them back up. I drew it around about there. So that's sitting on her lip there. And I'll go into this one and I'll move that back up as well. Just to around there. I press close that and press F in the keyboard. That's the final effect we are after. So I'll go back in here and I'll show you the before and after as well. So there's the before and there's the after. Vibrant, perhaps a bit too much, but at least you see how quickly you can create the effect. <laughs>